Perhaps the most important part of brass care is preventative maintenance. Uh, the good news with brass instruments is if you take care of them, there is relatively little need uh, for regular professional work on them. Um, a key piece to that is being able to appropriately clean your instruments. And a couple of really basic things uh, that you and your students should have on hand. One, uh, something that's large enough to fit your instruments in. The bad news is for our euphoniums and tubas, uh, that's probably just a bathtub. Um, you may be lucky enough to have a large wash, wash basin in uh, your classroom or close by to it. Um, that certainly works as well. Um, second, regular dish soap. Um, anything that um, has grease cutting power on it that you would put your grandmother's best silver in is going to be absolutely appropriate. Uh, presume that your uh, brass instruments are exactly that, your grandmother's best silver. Um, critically important that you have um, an instrument snake. This goes through your tubing, um, allowing you uh, to clean that tubing out, making sure that it's all set to go, that there's nothing extra growing within there. Uh, they come in different sizes for the different boards of instruments. So this one uh, happens to be a trumpet one. I have a trombone euphonium one over here as well. And then various oils um, and greases. And these are going to be specific to the instrument. Um, there's not just one single uh, brand that's going to be best, uh, but we'll talk about those as we encounter each of the instruments. But proper lubrication of your slides, valves, and rotors is really critically important. So when we start looking at um, washing the instruments, quite simply, uh, we want to have um, warm water. Uh, presume that any temperature of water that you feel comfortable doing dishes in is going to be appropriate for you to wash your brass instruments in. Uh, for silver instruments, um, they can actually withstand a lot higher temperature, but for your lacquer instruments, those are going to be the brass colored ones, um, if your temperature is too hot, it will actually take the lacquer off the outside of the instrument. So add just some regular, again, dish soap uh, to your water. Um, make sure that it's thoroughly distributed. And then we're going to dis uh, disassemble your instrument as we go. Now, when we're washing brass instruments, essentially um, the entire instrument can be uh, uh, submerged with the exception of one part of the valve, and we'll address those in a moment. So, we're going to just one piece at a time disassemble this, uh, place it in the water, and we'll let it sit there for about 30 minutes. Make sure that as you remove va uh, slides that you're pushing down the associated valve so that you don't create a vacuum. So when we look at valves, um, the part of the valve that we'd rather not have submerged is going to be at the very top. Um, the felts that are underneath um, the valve cap and likewise the felts that are uh, in between the valve cap and the button are going to be things that ideally we want to have not get wet. Now, it's not the end of the world if they do. Um, if they end up getting wet, just leave the instrument out to dry uh, without closing up the case. But one thing that I like doing, I just take a low um, little dish, fill it with the same warm dish water uh, that I had the instrument in, and I'm just going to set the valve in up to um, the top, um, or the, I should say the base of um, the uh, valve holes um, so that the instrument is able to have those washed while still keeping uh, the uh, valve caps dry. And last but not least, we want to take the valve caps off the bottom. Uh, these catch um, the grime and extra grease that's in there, so we we'll want to make sure that those are scrubbed out um, so that we don't end up having things drip on our legs as we play. When we wash the horn, we do virtually the exact same thing that we did with the trumpet and the euphonium, with one small exception. Um, and that has to do with the rotors that are on this instrument. Um, the rotors are essentially self-contained. Unless uh, you're a specialist on horn who's really familiar with rotors, um, the advice is leave the detailed cleaning and maintenance of those uh, to a professional. Now the good news is that rotors very rarely get severely uh, dirty. So doing a uh, regular baths with your horn is going to be fine. So we're going to take apart the whole horn with the exception of the rotors. What we will do is we'll take the rotor caps off, um, exposing the rotor underneath, but uh, we will not disassemble the rotor, which would require you to start taking it apart from the very back. But otherwise, we take apart the rest of the horn, uh, removing all the slides, and we're set to go. So while washing brass instruments, we want to usually let them soak for about 15 minutes to a half hour. Um, during that time, though, uh, we do need to clean out the inside of our tubing. And we do that with what's called a snake. Um, these are able to be purchased at pretty much any music store, and every music student should have one. 
Uh, the way the snake works is really quite simple. We're going to take the instrument out of the water. Uh, for the sake of your lap, make sure to dump the water all the way out, giving a couple of rotations so that it gets out of all the extra tubing. It's going to be particularly true on your horn. So the snake is going to go into any of the open-ended tubing. We just push it straight in, guide it through the instrument, and we pull it out the other side. Be careful that the brushes do not brush up against the bell as they, um, even though they're nylon, the metal that's underneath them can scratch. And if we've got an instrument that's pretty clean, it'll come out uh, looking still pretty clean. Uh, if you have a grungy instrument though, those can come out quite dirty. After each slide, make sure to rinse off uh, the brushes on the end of your snake. And we're just going to return and do that with each of them. For any slide that goes into a valve, oops, sorry about that, any slide that goes into a valve, we're just going to partially insert it. We don't want to push it all the way through into the valve casing. And then back out, again, rinsing it out. So I'm going to go through that with each um, of the open slides on the trumpet. Well, not critically necessary, um, I would advise also getting uh, a valve brush. This is just going to clean the inside of your valve casings. Um, again, same sort of process as with the uh, snake. Just insert it on through, uh, run it through and pull it back out, rinse it in between each one. Um, your valves should not have a lot of grime in them, especially if they were mo moving really well beforehand. Uh, but that's just a preventative measure to make sure that they're set to go. Once we snaked it out, we're going to put it right back into the water again. With each of our slides, we're also going to agree uh, to run the snake through. For the larger slides, like our main tuning slide, um, we're able to get the snake all the way through. Um, it will catch a little bit on the spit valve, um, on the water key, but uh, that's perfectly fine and uh, appropriate. Just push it straight on past. Uh, again, pulling it straight out. Be careful that it doesn't snag on the outside of your casing. And we're set to go. And again, placing it back in the water. For our smaller slides, uh, we'll do the same thing that we did on the valve casing parts of the instrument. So we insert it uh, just as far as it'll go uh, before the curve, pulling it back out, and then doing the same thing on the other side. Before you finish up with the instrument, one last thing that you want to do, and this is just to keep the finish of the instrument looking clean, um, is take a soft rag, um, preferably either microfiber or pure cotton. This is actually an old t-shirt. Um, and wipe down the exterior of the instrument. Um, this is just to get any grime off that may be there. In particular, the spots to pay attention to are anywhere where there is raw brass. These are going to be underneath the valve casings, or sorry, slide, uh, outer slide casings. Um, and those tend to accumulate a lot of extra grime. We also want to make sure that we uh, scrub down any screw mounts that are on our valves, as those are also another spot that grime is frequently accumulated. Regarding washing your trumpet valves, um, they have now been soaking for about 15 minutes. We're just going to take them out and uh, very quickly, using that same rag that you used on the rest of the instrument, uh, wipe down the lower part portions of the casing. Um, you want to make sure that these are totally clean. This is also important that you have a pretty lint-free rag. Um, again, I'm going to advocate uh, for the use of non-synthetics that, um, so that they don't scratch. And we're just going to scrub that clean, making sure that it looks, um, looks clean, that there's no buildup on it. Um, you'll oftentimes get dirty oil and grease on here. Um, so as you take a look at that valve casing, you'll notice that uh, it's pretty consistent in its color. Um, you don't want to do a lot of work going through the holes that are within it. Um, those ports can be damaged very easily. Um, young players will oftentimes want to thread a piece of cloth through to clean those out. And while you can lightly clean around the edges, uh, we definitely don't want to be moving something back and forth in those so that we don't damage our valves. When cleaning out the horn, um, the, the rules are basically the same. We're still running um, our uh, snake through the instrument. We just have to be a little more, more attentive because we have a lot more tubing present. Um, I do want to present one challenge with the horn, which is it holds a lot of water in it. So uh, in washing the horn, make sure you do multiple rotations to get all the water out. Three rotations will get it out. This is going to be the same process by which students empty spit and condensation out of their instruments as they play. So we've got that emptied out, and you'll notice that this horn, oops, almost had it emptied out. You'll notice that this horn has uh, two of its slides left in it. This is a school horn and um, it had been neglected a little bit. So these are slides that are stuck. Um, this is going to be the most common problem that you have with brass instruments, along with valves. Um, oops, still a little water there. 
along with valves um, that are stuck in. Um, if you have that stuck slide, give it a nice strong tug. Uh, you don't want to pull real hard. Uh, if it doesn't come out freely, this is going to be one of the times that you do send an instrument into the shop. Um, the braces that hold each of those slides in place um, are pretty fragile, and if you pull hard on it, you're going to run into problems. Aside from that, the process of snaking works the exact same. Um, you can use that same trumpet snake. They also make a slightly smaller horn snake um, for uh, the horn, but we snake it on around, uh, pushing down through, pulling it back out, and we do that with each of our slides as we go. When it comes to the first and third valve slides on uh, your French horn, or on your horn, make sure that you don't forget about the fact that water does accumulate here. So just like on the main body of the instrument, you want to rotate it to make sure that all the water is out uh, to prevent corrosion and any moisture growth inside the instrument. Quick note, we've talked about a couple of finish issues that come with instruments. Um, the most common ways that you'll find brass instruments are in uh, silver, which is actually a silver coating on top of brass, and then lacquer, which is um, a matter that they buff the brass and then put essentially a polyurethane over the top of it. What you see here is a trombone that is in raw brass. Um, so it's just had the lacquer stripped off of it. Um, dates back, it's about uh, 70 years old, and it's lived a long life. Um, the process for washing is the exact same. A note that if you have a student who has a raw brass instrument, they will tend to turn a uh, red ruddy color. This is just the natural coloration of brass uh, when it isn't finished. So if that's something that uh, a student doesn't want or an instrument that you have in your collection, the students are concerned that it's rusty or something's wrong with it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just the natural color that brass forms. But the process with trombone is the exact same as with uh, trumpet and horn. We're going to remove all the slides, uh, placing them into the water separately and allowing them to soak uh, for about 15 to 30 minutes. Um, importantly, when we're looking at the trombone, we want to make sure uh, that when uh, we wash it that we separate the outer and inner slides from each other. And we're going to want to treat the inner slide in particular very carefully. Uh, if the two prongs on it become bent, the slide will no longer work. So encourage your students to set this very gently down as it doesn't have the protective uh, engineering of the outer slide. So snaking of the trombone and euphonium and tuba is essentially the same as that of trumpet and horn. We just want to start at one end, uh, pushing it straight through. Again, encourage your students to be particularly careful with the exposed um, rod on the slide as um, it is more susceptible for being uh, bent out of shape, being bumped on the side of the tub or something along those lines. So we just push it on through uh, and likewise pull it out the other side and we're set to go. Um, as far as washing it, we do wash the exterior of, or the interior of this slide as well. Uh, again, using just a soft cloth, make sure that we're going in a continuous fashion straight down. Um, this should be um, you know, akin to like sharpening a knife where it's one smooth motion. Uh, nothing stopping along the way. We definitely don't want to twist and turn on it because again, that can damage the linkages that control uh, or that allow the slide to fit nicely onto the instrument. The great news when it comes to the euphonium is the euphonium is really just an oversized trumpet. Same processes are involved. We remove all the slides, we remove the um, valves and allow them to soak separately. One note to make with the valves so that your students don't panic. Um, the euphonium valve is designed a little differently than the trumpet valve is. Um, rather than having the spring integrated within it, um, the valve spring is actually in the base of the valve casing. You want to make sure that that spring is removed but treated carefully so that it doesn't become misshapen. Uh, but just like the trumpet, um, the valve on the euphonium has a small felt cap underneath the cap to keep it from clicking. And many, though this one does not anymore, have a small uh, rubber or felt cap inside underneath the button. Um, you want to make sure that those stay dry so that um, you don't promote uh, mold um, or other contamination of the instrument. When doing snakes through conical belt instruments, such as horn and euphonium, you want to make sure that you start from the smallest side of the tubing, moving to the largest side. On horn, this is not terribly well pronounced, but on euphonium and tuba, uh, you'll notice a distinct difference between uh, the diameter of uh, the small side versus the large side of the tubing. Once you've had your instruments uh, soaking for 15 to 30 minutes, uh, you're going to want to take them out of the water. As you take them out, you want to make sure you dry them immediately, otherwise they'll get water spotted. 
uh, on the finished parts, and on the non-finished parts, you can have water build up there. I also advise you to um, have some towels laid out on a table, or in the cases I have right now on my bathroom floor, um, so that the instruments can be thoroughly dry before you oil and grease them. Um, give them about 15 minutes just so that um, there isn't water interacting with the oils because the oils um, separate from that water, thereby not protecting your slides as well.